How's it going everybody? Zab here and welcome to another Hockey Ultimate Team update. Happy Monday to you guys. I actually recorded a Hut Team update uh, last, ooh, what was it, Friday? And I got a handful of donations from Shredder, Shredder Shark 31 and let me talk about why I'm mumbling uh, left and right here. Uh, basically, I recorded this video and it had all the donations in it. I opened them up live so you got my reaction and everything. Uh, but I decided to go ahead and re-record it just because at the time... Uh, excuses, excuses, right? But at the time, I was extremely tired, just got home, um, and I have this cold sore on my mouth. It's even hard to talk right now, but I have this cold sore on my mouth, and it's right where, like, my bottom lip connects with my gums. There's a cold sore, like, right in between there, and basically, I mean, that's how you talk, that's how you chew, right? You're, you're using those uh, that, that jaw and that lip, um, and for me, I talk a lot, so I'm using my lip more than a normal human being. And so the cold sore actually, without getting too graphic, basically like split. And now I just have like an open sore in my mouth, which probably isn't the safest. Probably should get something done uh, with that. So every single, I, I, see, I can't even do it now. Every single time I talk and move my bottom lip, basically I'm in pain. I'm not being a crybaby uh, pussy, but I'm going to be marble mouthed quite a bit. And I was even more so when I recorded it a couple days ago. So I decided, you know what, let's just go ahead and scratch it and record everything and just start new, fresh, and, and whatnot. So again, Shredder Shark 31 on Twitter. Gave me his whole entire team for some reason, which was nutty. So a big thank you to Shredder Shark 31 uh, Again, if you want to go follow him on Twitter, there is a link to his Twitter and a link to his YouTube channel as well. So make sure to check out his YouTube channel to see some content from the one and only Shredder Shark, who has donated to me in the past in NHL 14. We talk every now and again. He's a solid dude overall. So getting into the team uh, from last week to this week. I don't think we actually made any additions to the team right now. We're going to jump in. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I really don't think there was anything that we did. We could take a look real quick. Um, there were a few players that Shredder donated to me that I am definitely, well, maybe going to use on my team. Um, but we're going to talk about in a couple minutes. Make sure to stay tuned uh, for a potential, a potential trade day. And uh, if everything does go smoothly, it'll be my first trade day I have ever done on YouTube. Or the first trade day I've ever done, period, other than a couple mini one-hour trades on stream. So that'll be pretty exciting, and it's going to be huge. We're talking, talking 20, 30, maybe even more players on the trade block. It's going to be absolutely huge. If you have tons and tons of coins, you may see guys like Tavares, Hosa, Datsuk. You might even see guys like Bergeron, Kessel, Duchesne. If you have maybe a smaller budget, you might see guys like Parise or Kessler, maybe Gabrick Thornton. If you have an even smaller um, coin purse, shall we say, you might see guys like Skinner or TJ Oshi or guys like that so every single person I want to make sure that every single person has a chance to trade whether you have a hundred thousand coins 200,000 coins 50,000 coins or five coins you're going to be able to, to send some type of a trade and be a part of this video so hopefully you guys enjoy that but starting with the fourth line nothing's changed so I'm not going to talk about the players if you want my opinions and my mini like one minute review on each player make sure to check out last week's video or something like that but just since you know nothing has changed I'm not really going to talk about many of these players other than some of the newer ones uh, that we got last week so Skinner Thornton Gabrick uh, Parise, Kessler, McKinnon, Datsuk, Tavares, Hosa. I want to talk about Datsuk because I did get him donated uh, by Mr. Beamer's Hut, the one and only on Twitter. Again, you can go ahead and follow him as well, who donated this to me uh, last week. And this whole entire line is actually donations from Beamer. So this is the Beamer's, Beamer's Hut line. And a lot of you guys told me to put Datsuk at center, which I completely agreed with. Um, but personally, I like my... I don't like slow players, but if I do have a slow player on the line, I prefer him to be at center just because he's not rushing up and down the wings. I generally pass to my wingers on the rush and not my centers. So it's nice to have fast and uh, skillful uh, guys like Datsuk, Duchesne, Kessel, you know, Parise, McKinnon, uh, Gabrick, and the list goes on. So I like to have my fat, faster guy, guys on the wing and not at center. So that's why I have Datsuk on the right wing, and he's doing pretty good, so I'm not going to screw with it. And also the biggest reason, to be 100% honest, was I had like a 1,000 coins, and I didn't have any change positions. So I decided, you know what, it's working, um, and I don't have any change positions. So let's just not screw with it. Tavares is doing what Tavares needs to do, and Datsuk is doing what Datsuk needs to do. So Let's not screw with the thing. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, as a, one, a wise man once said. So I left it like that. Datsuk's been doing pretty good. Pros and cons. Pros, he's pretty speedy. Obviously has some filthy hands with 90. Very good defensively with a 92. So he's kind of a, a two-way-ish player. Um, personally, I like him. However, I don't absolutely love him. I notice, I mean, 
he is a small guy. What is he? 5'11", five, five, 198, so he's a pretty small fella, and uh, he gets knocked off the puck fairly easily, uh, maybe a little easier than I would personally like. Uh, also, I noticed that he gets um, poke-checked super easily, and I don't know why. That's generally something you don't notice uh, with players. You don't notice, like, oh, you know, Joe Blow, or, you know, put the name there. You don't notice he gets poke-checked so, so often compared to anyone else, but for some reason... Datsuk has the puck in the next second, it's poked off his stick. I don't know if it's just a coincidence or what, but uh, it's a little bit ridiculous. But other than that, I've really liked this player. Only used him for maybe 10 games. However, he has like 75 or 80 points, but those are because of offline games that Beamer played. Uh, so I can't really gauge exactly how good he's doing on my team, but I'd probably say in 10 or so games, he's played 10 or 15. I'd say he probably has like 7, 8 points in those 10 or so games, which, you know, isn't bad for a second liner. Close to a point per game, I'll take that. So pretty good player there. Duchesne, Bergeron, Kessel, I've mentioned it before. Best line I've ever used. Duchesne, the best player I've ever used in Hut, any Hut, uh, starting from when I started out playing Hockey Ultimate Team in 2013. So, I love him. Defensively, Murray Wisniewski, amazing as always. Uh, Girardi and Dowdy, decent. Keith, kind of a piece of crap. He's not a piece of crap. He's really good. He's just not good for me personally. And then Petrangelo, the best defenseman I've used in the game so far other than Ryan Murray. Uh, Ryan Murray is probably number one. Wisniewski might be number two. Uh, it, but if he's not number two, Petrangelo is for sure at that number two spot right behind Ryan Murray. Um, he's very, very good. He had a I think it was like a six-point night or something the other night, six or seven-point night with a hat trick and everything. It was ridiculous, and he's been having a lot of good games. He's strung together like three or four three-point nights, if not more, and so his point totals have skyrocketed since the last time you've seen him, and he's a very good defenseman, two-way defenseman, and uh, that's exactly how I would uh, how I would analyze this guy. He pretty much can do it all. He could skate. He's fast. He has a hard shot, an accurate shot, good hands, good checking, great defense. Pretty much just has it all. As far as our goaltenders, our backup is now actually Craig Anderson, who previously was our starter, and Ward was his backup. Uh, Anderson was a very good goaltender, very consistent, and won a lot of games. Hiller, however, a lot of you guys suggested that I should pick up Jonas Hiller, an overwhelming amount of you guys. Every single time I said, what goalie should I get, what goalie should I get, you guys kept pounding me with Jonas Hiller. I wanted to pick him up, but I was like, ah, I don't know how good he is. I ended up pulling him in a pack. He only goes for like a 1,000 coins. I was like, I'm not going to sell him. I may as well use him. Still, I do not have the change team to Pittsburgh, but you know what? Right now, things are working, and like I said earlier in the video, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and things right now are not broke. In fact, we won a, uh, a playoff title, and we also won a Division One title, our second Division One title uh, of the year within the past week. So, you know, obviously things are working. Jonas Hiller has not lost a game yet, and he's played almost 10, so I'm going to go ahead and just, just leave everything the way it is. Very good goaltender. Best one I've used so far, knock on wood. Hopefully it stays that, uh, that way for the remainder of NHL 15. If you really care about power play lines and PK, you can go ahead and take a look at it. I honestly have not even adjusted it all that much, so that's something I might want to do definitely. I don't know why uh, why Tavares is my center. I should have a guy like Kessler there, but you know what? Uh, that's something to fix in the future. So there you go, guys. That's the team. We could take a look at the donations next. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the stats. Then we're going to go ahead and do the three stars of the week. And then finally, we're going to sign on off and let you guys know about, oh, we'll let you know about the uh, trade day right now, actually, as we look at some of these donations. You see 18 items in the inbox, and uh, all these are donated by uh, Shredder Shark 31, like I mentioned before, and he also donated a few more that I think are in my collection and not in my inbox. Um, I opened up like five packs this week. Best pull, a beautiful Wayne Simmons, good card, but uh, for the close to like what 30-40k I spent on packs this week, probably not the best of pulls. So going into the inbox, however, going into some of our donations, a guy like Vlasic, very nice, solid defenseman. These are a bunch of good, affordable players that I think you guys are gonna love. So Vlasic, a guy that I could definitely use, but I'm gonna include him in my trade day. 2k you got a guy like ham use which is about two and a half three k crachy who's about six seven k very good center i've used him before really really like him and if i do not trade him in this trade day uh i would not this trade day this is a hut team update the the trade day is going to be posted this friday all right this friday which is december i don't even know what it is i should probably look it up i'll look it up as we uh, record this video but it's going to be this friday and uh, i'll post it I'll post it instantly as I list the cards up. Uh, at that very second, the cards will officially be up and you guys can trade. So make sure to check out the channel this Friday. I almost always uh, upload my videos at 6 a.m. in the morning. Um, so make sure to check at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time in the morning to see if there's a video up. Make sure to subscribe. It'll be sent to your uh, inbox, and you can go ahead and see when these cards are up. I'm going to list them for three days, so you shouldn't have a, an issue listing or, or getting your trade in there. 
and uh, you guys can just go crazy, crazy, send me all the trades you want, troll trade me, I don't give a damn, send in everything, I'll just make the video more entertaining, so go for it, uh, but again, this Friday, which is going to be the, it's going to be December, happy December, I think I mentioned it, maybe I didn't, happy Thanksgiving to those of you that do celebrate it, if you do celebrate it, let me know how things were, any crazy family stories on Thanksgiving, I'd love to be entertained, so go ahead and just leave a comment about that, Black Friday, did you do any Black Friday shopping personally, uh, I did not, I did my best not to even leave the house all that much, in fact, uh, there was a lot of ice and snow where I live, so uh, it was not very safe conditions, especially uh, we just bought a, and we can get into a story about this later, but I actually just um, purchased a new car, uh, and it is an absolute beauty. We're running over 300 horsepower, and already as it is, it's a car that <laughs> you don't even have to mean to. Barely press the pedal, and it's going to like drift around a corner. So in ice, probably not the safest thing to drive, so I just stayed in for the day. But I know a few people that do. Oh, we didn't have snow on Black Friday. It was the day after that. What am I talking about? But it's still icy out uh, and cold. And obviously, Black Friday is absolutely ridiculous. I know a couple of people that Black Friday shop, and uh, it's just the dumbest thing ever. It's cool. I get that it's a rush, and it's an, it, it's it's something. It's cool. I don't, it's not the deals and stuff. I don't think that many people go to do it. I know that's a big part of it, obviously. I think it's just the atmosphere and the experience more than anything. But uh, anyway, let me know if you have any stories of that. So December, uh, it's going to be December uh, the 5th. December 5th, we're going to have the trade day, so make sure to check out the channel then. I've been talking about this for 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and show you the players. Carlson, Johnson. Uh, Ekman Larson, TJ Oshie. Then you see you got a little, you know, some cheaper guys along the lines of uh, Tarasenko, Turris, Callahan, Molson, guys that are only going for a thousand, guys that are going under a thousand, Eberly, all these players. 600, this guy's 600 coins, Mata. So if you only have a few coins or you have a few contracts or you have a few whatever, go ahead and just send it into Mata. I'll probably accept whatever for him. Hornquist. Uh, Mark Andre Fleury and Gibson. Again, a big thank you to Shredder Shark 31. I know I've plugged it a lot, but uh, if you want to go check out his channel and/or Twitter, make sure to do so. Very quality fella there. So thank you for that. These are going to be some of the players that are in the trade. Well, these are the players that are in the uh, trade day, but I'm also going to have a few more, and uh, that's where you guys come in in the comment section down below. Go ahead and do me a couple of things. I might have a link to a straw poll where you can vote on the players. I do have a straw poll. Go ahead and check the description. But if I don't get it up in time, check Twitter because I probably will have one uh, out there. So at Zab Productions, links in the first line of the description like always. Uh, so some of the players that I want in the trade day are going to be players off of my team, obviously. So Duchesne's probably not a guy I'm willing to put up for trade just because I don't care what you send for. I'm not going to accept it. Uh, but anyone else on my team, go ahead and in the comment section down below say, you know, put up Parise or list this guy, put this guy in the trade day or that guy and I'll definitely listen to that and you know what I'm not opposed to listing up a player I am fairly stingy with the trades but uh, you know talking about what I want what I don't want that'll all be in the trade day video itself some other players that you guys are maybe not familiar with uh, because I just haven't really shown you them all that much are some of my special items I do have a couple of team of the week cards pretty much low-end cards but actually the, the cards have gone up a guy like Bonino a Bonino flew around my room I bought him for maybe 2k he now goes for about 11 uh, guys like Nicolaitan Strom Will Ferrell Shinkarik is an awesome story here I bought him for like 3k and now he's going for 25 so I'll take that profit Sanford again bought for like 2k or something now goes for about five all these players are bought for like 2k and uh, the only one that stayed around 2k is Nicolaitan so hopefully you guys uh, you know you might want some of these guys and here's just a quick hint just a quick hint Maybe I shouldn't even give out this hint because it's so valuable. But these players are, for the most part, these lower-end players, uh, guys like Farrell, Strom, Nicolaitan, guys along these lines that are in junior teams, the OHL, WHL, QMJHL, and so on and so forth. Uh, they're only, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think they are only pullable in bronze packs or silver packs, uh, depending on you know what their, their card is. So all these bronze cards, are those original cards that are bronze, are only going to be pullable in bronze packs, I believe, right? Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But with that being said, they are generally, you find, generally they are not as popular as some of the gold players. So Bonino, there's only two of them, so he's still not that popular. Um, but maybe a guy that's like a gold card, I think Shinkarik's a gold card. Uh, he There's three of them on the market. But if you look at these bronze cards, see this one, there's zero on the market. This one, there's zero on the market. This one, there's zero on the market. Are you seeing the trend? And Nicolaitan, there's only one. And generally, there are only one or zero. So with this being said, the least or the cards that have the least amount of cards on the market it are going to be a little more valuable. Now, not more valuable than car like Nicolaitan is not going to be more valuable than Bonino, but I'm saying if there are less cards on the market, they're going to be worth more. 
So it's pretty it's pretty simple. Uh, you know, a card like Crosby, there's usually only like one or two, maybe three on the market, and that's why he's so expensive. If there were 50 or 60 or 70 on the market at one time, his price would maybe drop by 300k because they're so common and so easily pullable. So that's just a little hint to you guys when there are Team of the Weeks out, uh, which is, well, there's always Team of the Weeks out. Just go ahead, open up a few bronze packs. If you pull a Team of the Week, just store them away till the next week, if not longer, when they're not going to be pullable and there's going to be the least amount of those bronze uh, Team of the Week cards on the market. So that's just a quick little tip for you. It's worked for me, obviously, because all these cards I bought for 2K, you see a guy for 11K, a guy for 2.5, a guy for 6, a guy for about 5, a guy for 25, and a guy for about another 5. So there you go. Just quick tips with Zab. I know this video has gone on way too long. It's very sporadic, spur of the moment, and all over the place, but that's usually how my videos are anyway. That's I guess uh, my little special cork, right? So hopefully you guys did enjoy this video and we're going to go ahead and show you the team just one last time so you guys can vote on who you want to be in the trade day. Again, I'll trade away anyone. I'll even put Duchesne up if I have to, but I'm probably not going to accept anything if it's any less than like a cross because he's so, so damn good. Uh, so we can just go ahead and show you the team one more time. There it is. I'm not even going to go over it. Well, we'll go over the names. Castle, Bergeron, Duchesne. Uh, Datsuk, Tavares, Hosa, McKinnon, Kessler, Parise, Gabrick, Thornton, Skinner, Petriangelo, Keith, Hiller, Girardi, Dowdy, uh, Murray, Wisniewski, and then Craig Anderson's the backup goaltender. So if you want any of those guys in the trade day, make sure to comment the hell out of the comment section, and we can take a look at the team and take a look, see poo at the uh, the stats. But before we do that, we'll look at the record: 171, 97, and 22. That's a pretty hefty record. I should probably go outside uh, within the next week or two, and we could look at the uh, the actual record here of the playoffs because uh, there's a couple crazy games that we could talk about in a quick second. If everything loads up here and I actually go to the right places, playoffs right here. I already did it. One playoffs. It was only the amateur cup. You see, I uh, I did my best how to chell impression and I won the game 14 to zero. The next one four to zero. The next one five to three. And the next one seven to one. So some pretty crazy scores, especially that first one there. Uh, and then you see we won our second division one title. So that's pretty nifty right there. Nifty and thrifty. And now we can finally go ahead and go over to the team stats or the player stats, excuse me, and, and see who our top point getters are. Now I told you a few weeks back that watched just in a few weeks maybe a few months a guy like uh, a guy like Duchesne who out only at the time maybe had 10 games played I said well, just, just wait just wait he will be our number one point getter at some point and you see it hasn't quite happened but uh, he's actually tied with our number one point getter, which is McKinnon. So I guess you could say technically, I mean, I guess we can just go ahead and dub Duchesne as our top point getter. I mean, he has more goals. He's played less games. So we'll just say, but for right now, McKinnon technically is at number one if you uh, if you categorize it like that. So I guess our top five point getters, McKinnon, Duchesne, Bergeron, Murray, and Kessel. And Gabrick is, uh, is technically fifth because uh, tied for first, I guess, would be Duchesne and McKinnon. But uh, no doubt Duchesne is going to pass McKinnon within the next game, honestly. 140 games played and 145 points. Are you kidding me? Uh, that's crazy. <laughs> 89 goals, 57, or, yeah, 56 assists. Just a crazy player. To be a point per game in Division One is almost impossible. And uh, Duchesne made the impossible possible. And uh, one of the best cards. No, not even one of the best. The best cards. The best cards, plural. There's multiple. The best card I've ever used in the huts so top three point getters uh and we could take a look at some of the players i spotlighted guys like uh, datsuk who has 82 points in 65 games again he probably only has like around eight points in 10 games for me um another guy like petriangelo 40 points in 52 games, not bad as a defenseman. You see some other defensemen uh, like Keith, who only has six more points, but has so many more games played. And, uh, and a guy like Mr. Dowdy, who has over 100 games played and only seven more points than Pet. Ray Angelo. So there you go, guy. I don't know what that accent was. So there you go. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. But before we do sign on off, which I feel like I said 15,000 times in this video, we're going to do the three stars of the week. Something we've done, I think, since the very beginning here. And our third star of the week is going to go to a guy we just spotlighted and a guy I'm on right now. Our first defenseman in the three stars of the week ever since. Uh, I think I had Wisniewski and I for sure had Murray and I think in the pr first couple of weeks. But other than that, he's going to be our first defenseman since then, I should say. Uh, and that's going to be Petriangelo, who's one of the best defensemen I've ever used, like I said, other than Murray and maybe Wisniewski, so solid, like I said, he's strung together like three or four, maybe five, three-point nights, if not more, and uh, he's been lighting it up, he's been doing so, so good for me, he's a physical physical guy, he could throw the body, he's 6'3", 201, so he's a, he's a tall guy, big guy, but he could also skate fast, hard shot, accurate shot, um, really, really good card, and for the price, definitely pick him up he's been way better than a guy that goes for over 100k guys like keith and dowdy so there you go he is number three 
Number two, on, number two on the list. Ooh, what was that? Number two on the list was something I kind of debated. I wanted to put uh, Mr. Don't Eat the Phil Cookies Kessel there, but I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and put a guy that's been there since the beginning, and I say that every time, uh, which is Marion Gaborik. Gabrick, 190 games played, 107 points. Such a solid card. Guys, if you're just starting out on Hut, or you only have 5K and you just need a superstar, or if you have 500K and you need a superstar, it doesn't matter how many coins you have. Pick up Gabrick. He's one of the best players I've ever used. He's been on the top three stars of the week every single week I've had him and he's amazing I, I can't say enough about this guy go pick him up that's why he is number two he scores goals like a mother tons of shorthanded goals he's on the fourth line for god's sake and he's coming up with a goal every couple games so it's ridiculous this guy number one no surprise and it won't be a surprise for the next however many months I think he's probably going to be number one every single week up until I get rid of this game uh, or until I get rid of the player which I never see happening unless there's a team of the week version which is Matt Duchesne the doucher a point per game over a point per game in uh, division one with 140 games played, 89 goals, 56 assists, coming in at a whopping 145 points. So there you go, guys. We could take a look at the goalies. Uh, seven and one for Hiller. So eight games played, eight wins technically. Seven wins, one loss. The one loss was from a disc, not a disconnect, but the other player was a pussy and quit on me. And uh, the way this works in this game, which is stupid, and I don't know why it hasn't been fixed. If the other player quits, it counts as a loss against your goaltender, and it fatigues your goalie, which is just the most dumb thing I've ever heard of. I don't know why EA hasn't fixed it yet, but for the foreseeable future, it looks like it's going to be that way. And uh, unfortunately, that is a blemish on his stats. But technically. He is 8-0 with a 1.0 goals against average and 89 save percentage. And like I said, best goaltender I've used thus far in Hut. And uh, Anderson, not too shabby, close to, uh, and he probably is technically over uh, 500 because I I know that a handful, maybe it's only 5, maybe it's 10, maybe it's 15, maybe it's even 20 of those losses come from uh, other people quitting on me, therefore counting uh, against him in the loss department. So 41 and 42, but like I said, uh, if you take into consideration all those losses that are actually wins, he's probably more like 60 and something else. Like He's probably not anywhere close to 500, probably way above that and uh, with a 1.0 goals against average and 88 save percentage, it would definitely support that fact. So there you go guys hopefully you did enjoy this video if you did please do smack it with a big thumbs up and subscribe for much much more guys as always i'm zab and i'll see you next time